everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Robert Moss and he is talking about his book, Growing Big Dreams, Manifesting Your Heart's Desire Through 12 Secrets of the Imagination. So Robert Moss is a New York Times bestseller author and um, he's going to be talking about um, the creator. He's also the creator of the School of Active Dreaming, which is a synthesis of modern dream work and ancient shamanic practices. You can find him at mossdreams.com. And he is also speaking on um, February 26th at eastwestbookshop.com from 6 to 7.30. So welcome. Good to be dreaming with you, CJ. <laughs> yes, I, I, it's great to be dreaming with you too. I really enjoyed your book. I wanted to start off with just some basic terms because there's so much about dreaming out there. There's astral projection, lucid dreaming, yoga nidra, dream yoga. Um, is it all the same? Is it different? How is what you're doing different or similar to all the different types of dreaming techniques out there? Well, all these words have slightly different applications. They relate to slightly different techniques and approaches. I would say we're dreaming all the time in one mode or another. Sometimes we're really just sleepwalking. And we're often yes. sleepwalking in regular life, not knowing what it's all about, forgetting we have a purpose, trying to fit in with schedules and expectations. So sometimes I notice we're more asleep when we think we're awake than we are in a dream of the night when we wake up. So here's my fund and fundamental definition of what dreaming is all about. Dreaming is not fundamentally about what happens during sleep. It's about waking up, waking up to a deeper reality, waking up to a deeper purpose, waking up to what the secret wish of your soul, the secret heart desire of your heart might be and learning to manifest it. Now you can come at this in various ways. When I invented the term active dreaming, which is a provocation, it's meant to be a sort of in your face challenge to the idea that dreaming is just passive. You lie down, you fall asleep, you have a dream, or dream has you. Active dreaming implies we can get active about dreaming in several senses. We can go consciously into the dream space. We can do that when we, when we learn to lucid dream. We can do that when we learn to meditate in a certain way. We can do that when we learn to journey like a shaman. We can do it when we can maintain consciousness in that drifty state between sleep and awake, the hypnagogic zone, where I recommend you spend much more time if you want to become a lucid dreamer or a dream yogi or any of that. That's the easiest place to do it. So active dreaming might be about learning to go consciously into the field of dreaming. One of the doorways for that is you remember a dream, you're not quite sure what's going on. It has mystery, it has romance, it has challenge, it has danger. You can learn to go back inside that dream, wide awake and conscious and have an adventure, bring back gifts. So that is part of the aspect of active dreaming is about learning to go consciously and intentionally into the dream space. But it's also about bringing more from the dream world into waking life and learning to embody it and learning to bring energy and healing and guidance from a deeper world into the physical world. And this for me is the heart of real magic. And my personal lexicon, real magic is about bringing gifts from one world into this world. And that's what you do when you catch something from a dream, maybe a dream of the night, but it's a spontaneous experience. You didn't even want it, you didn't like it, but there's something there. If you can bring it through and shape it in a certain way, it becomes a gift. So that part of active dreaming is about walking our dreams in the sense of learning to take action, not just analyzing dreams, but embodying them, going on with them. It's also about learning to talk our dreams with other people, to share them with other people in a way which is mutually reinforcing, turns both of us into storytellers, uh, enables us to give each other some feedback in a helpful, quick, fun, non-authoritarian way, and again, be guided to action. And finally, active dreaming, is about recognizing that we are dreaming with our eyes wide open in the world if we just pay attention. Everything is speaking. In my native Australia, the Aborigines say we walk in the speaking land. The river is speaking. The kookaburra is speaking. The lizard is speaking. The mountain is speaking. Pay attention. So in our ur largely urban environment, in our largely online environment, it might be that what pops up in our Facebook news feed is what is speaking on a certain morning. It might be the vanity plate on the car outside. But to recognize that the world around you is a living fabric of signs and symbols and rich experiences of synchronicity. This is about coming alive as a dreamer with all of your senses in the embodied world of the waking dream. So mm. that's for me 
Within that, things like shamanic journeying, lucid dreaming, yoga nidra, all of this fits. It all has a place. It's a whole spectrum of approaching consciousness as a way of accessing deeper realities and then bringing more from those deeper realities into your Back life. Into, yeah, and into your waking, supposed wake at life. <laughs> Not about letting it all float free. I love getting out there and traveling and having an adventure, but I also like to see come back into the body, into the world, and make life better. Mm. Okay, so um, I wanted to ask um, what came to me is um, when you live in this way, when you allow the soul to speak to you through your dreams, and you live in an awakened state as you're navigating the world. How has your life changed as a result of that? Well, you had me thinking as you built up to that excellent question about what happened to me in midlife half a lifetime ago, when I decided to move to some land in upstate New York on the edge of traditional Mohawk Indian country. Mm -hmm. And I moved there because a tree spoke to me and a hawk spoke to me. I'm sitting under an old white oak tree behind a dilapidated farmhouse. Well, I just got shivers, like you said in the book. I'm like, wow, okay, so a hawk and a tree, okay. It comes with goosebumps. This is the science of shivers. You're right yeah. there. You're right there, CJ, you're right inside it. Yeah. So I'm sitting under an old white oak behind the farmhouse and a hawk comes circling overhead, dropping lower and lower, and she drops a feather between my legs. And I'm wondering whether I should move to this place. It's not the only reason that I moved, but it was the clincher. And funnily enough, after dreaming with the hawk and the first people of the land, because the spirits of the land started talking to me a lot, three years later, when I was called to come back into community and start teaching these things and become a dream teacher, you know, we sold the house. We sold it to a woman who was going to be the conservator, the curator of that property, look after the land, who'd sat with the tree at my request and, mm -hmm. and received approval. And I go back in the house to check just before we leave this place I was called to by the hawk. And I hear a rustling behind the fire screen in the fireplace we'd installed in a new room at the back end of the house. And I go to the fireplace and I remove the fire screen. There's a very young hawk, a very young fledgling hawk. With oh, some... oh my God, chills again. Wow. And, okay. Uh, so my last action on the land I bought in part because of the hawk is to carry the young hawk outside next to my heart and release it. And what <gasps> fly into the limbs of the oak where the first hawk spoke to me. See, this, this, this is the web, this is the weave, this is the wing brush, the wing brush, the wingtips of the secret world that becomes not so secret anymore. When you start regarding, I'm getting shivers myself, when you start regarding the incidents of physical life as also part of a dream. You mm. know, for actually for our ancestors, for indigenous and ancient peoples, it's all of the same weave. You don't separate what happens in sleep from what happens in altered states of consciousness from what happens in the world in which all of your senses are alive. It's it's all flowing together and you're using all of it. So I guess I'm a very primal character. I'm actually not a new age character at all, CJ. I'm sorry. I'll get out of here if you don't want a non-new age type. I'm a very old age type. I think I dream seriously, seriously, yeah. and playfully, yeah. the way that all our ancestors used to dream. But we sort of, sort of lost the habit. We lost the discipline. Now I've got this, that, and the other purporting to be something radically new. And it might be radically new in the sense that our society basically forgot how to dream. But the secret is there in the practice of the ancient dream shamans who are in all our family traditions and all our lineages if we go back far enough. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. So how, how does it enhance? How has it shifted? Here's my personal issue of the day, my personal challenge of the day, is um, I'm beginning to realize that beauty has been inside of me, is around me all the time, and I just don't have the creative eyes to see it yet. Like I haven't, it's been there all the time. I now know that it's been there all the time. I've had various um, meditations where I've seen it and felt it sensorily I, and just know that it's there. And and there's this also this sense of like flourishing creativity all all the time. Um, and it seems like you're there. The way that you navigate life is through this place. Um, or would you call, describe it? You describe it in your book as imagination. Would you describe it that way or something else? Well, imagination is the art of opening to the images that the deeper life, the deeper mind, the deeper soul gives us. I mean, it's. Mm. 
Can I ask you to close your eyes for a minute? I'm not going to do anything weird. I'm not going to try to hypnotize you. I just want to give you in a few words an image from last night, from my dreams last night, and just okay. see how it plays in your mind. Very short. So you're looking for a very special tree, and you know that its leaves are red. I mean, redder than is possible in the fall. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you see the tree ahead of you, and the leaves, the foliage is rich and thick, and it's flame red. It's so bright red, it's exciting. You're stirred by it. You know there's healing, there's potency, there's power in this red tree. It's mysterious to you, and you want to see where it is, what it is, and it stands on a green slope amongst, above a beautiful green valley. And in the presence of this tree, with this blood red, fire red foliage, you feel you have access to power you can bring into your body and bring into your life. So I simply give that to you. Mm. Those mm. colors alive for you? Um, what, what comes alive for me when I do that? Yeah. Um, there's a certain um, energy that comes from the contrast of the red and the green. Yeah. Like I'm imagining the green, vivid green that you'd see on an English countryside mm -hmm. and the bright kind of magenta red that you would see in um, a tree during the fall. So there's this deep contrast between these two seasons, one in the spring and one in the fall. So I, I see the contrast between those those seasons, it, those are the in-between seasons, between yeah. things. Yeah. So, um, and that's, yeah. That's great. And, you know, my practice every day is to draw. Mm. From, so there's a quick sketch of the red tree. That's just an image from last night. It's incredibly simple. So is the drawing. Mm. And the point, the point, point, this is an example of doing something with your dreams, doing something creative. You make a collage, mm. you, pitch, you write a story, certainly you keep a journal because your dream produces. And I think, by the way, whatever else is going on in dreams, sometimes we become aware. We have a personal film production company that is making dream productions for us every night, maybe to entertain us, maybe to educate us, maybe to kick us or shock us awake. I don't know where exactly this dream came from. It felt as if I was on a, a, an excursion, an expedition somewhere. But I love the power and energy of the red tree. So when you're talking about what is imagination, how does it work? I just wanted to see whether without any other agenda, I could simply transfer the power of the color and the contrast between the red and the green in that dream. No other agenda. But you know what? The agenda for this kind of imaginal work, which means work with the true imagination, is limitless. For example, the body believes in images. If we can learn to give our body the right image, whether we generate it ourselves or someone else offers it to us, we might do better. Unfortunately, much of the time we're bringing ourselves down by telling ourselves the wrong stories, repeating the wrong mantras, the wrong personal mantras and indulging in the wrong images that persuade our body to do badly, to pump out the wrong chemicals. You find the right image. It might be that red tree in a green landscape. It might be something else completely. And it will bring your body up and give you stamina and juice and joy for your journey. Mm, I love it. OK, um, we've been talking to Robert Moss, um, um, who is talking about his book, Growing Big Dreams, Manifesting Your Heart's Desire with 12 Secrets of the Imagination. And I want to talk to you in the next segment um, about setting up yourself um, during, before and after a dream. We've talked, we've touched upon that very quickly during this segment, but I want to talk about that during the next segment. Thank you so Happy. much. Happy to. Sweet dreams.